Let's see the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Time to talk football. Uh, the first competitive match between Ghana and Nigeria took place on the 20th of October 1951, uh, the Jaco Cup to be precise, which Nigeria won 5 0. Four years after that encounter, the Super Eagles suffered their biggest loss to the date in the hands of their rival uh, when they lost 0 7 on October 30th, 1955, in the Jaco Cup. Now, the two West African countries, Nigeria and Ghana, have come against each other on 56 occasions uh, with the Black Stars urging out their counterparts with more victories, meaning that, you know, uh, Ghanaians have actually won uh, the game most often. Now, Nigeria is seeking to qualify for the World Cup for the seventh time and since 1994 uh, have missed only one of seven editions. The last of three appearances by Ghana was in 2014. Now, looking at, you know, the qualifiers, uh, as we are being told, you have uh, the Super Eagles arriving already in Kumasi in Ghana for the game uh, which is slated to happen the first leg happening today uh, we have mighty George who joins the conversation this morning he is a sports journalist and communication director of Vandreza FC it's good to have you join us this morning mighty George good morning it's great to be here on uh, DJ Okay, so but let, let's start off with the formation for the Super Eagles. Looking at the formation for the Super Eagles, uh, you have the likes of uh, Osimhen being go going to be part of it, uh, you know, uh, amongst others, and juxtaposing that, you know, with the uh, formation for the Black Stars. What should we expect today? We we'll expect um, one of the fiercest uh, African rivals, as usual. Uh, just like you got some of the stats there. Um, interestingly, Ghana has won more games competitively against Nigeria. But they haven't been to the World Cup as many times as Nigeria. You know, and they weren't at the last World Cup in Russia. So obviously this would be, um, you know, a desperate Ghanaian side added to the fact that they were very um, accumulated at the last uh, Cup of Nations. Well, Nigeria went out one stage later, but Nigeria was clearly a better side until that, um, would I say, ill fated game against Tunisia. So it, it's a fierce rival. Nigeria Ghana is always, you know, on and off the pitch, one of the biggest rivalries uh, in African football. Um, you know, you could look at the other game that people will be looking out for Egypt and Senegal, you know, courtesy of the. Uh, uh, star players there who are essentially teammates. But uh, with the build up has been great, you know, we've um, seen our players, all the players, almost all the players expected turn up. The only snag was uh, Maduka Okoye, um, who said he, you know, he fell ill. And um, the headache would be about who starts in goal. I mean, that's even the headache for me as well. Francis Zoho has proven to be. Uh, quite reflective, you know, a uh, player, he was the one at the World Cup in 2018, later on dropped down the pecking order when he moved to a third division side. It wasn't that big for picking for a Super Eagles player. And uh, then came Maduka Okoye, you know, but he's not around today. I I'm thinking that, you know, it's going to be a Daniel Akwe who is, uh, you know, playing more competitively in South Africa with Kaiser Chiefs. But that's the headache of the coach right now. Either of those two goalkeepers, um, we don't have any other choice. So Nobu just came in and uh, he's even, he has even been on the bench for Aimba for, you know, about three games. So that, that was a big controversial why they decided to put him in. Uh, maybe because he's been part of the team in the past, but surely um, he would need to step up just in case, you know, something happens to these two goalkeepers along the line which we certainly doubt. The goalkeeping position is not, um, you know, third choice goalkeepers don't go into a game thinking that they would, uh, you know, play on the day. We have our defence sorted. Good news, of course, William Tristecombe is the right there as well. Leon Balogo is returned to the side. Kenneth Tomero is there as well. There's a power pack back line in the midfield as well. You know, it, it's great to see uh, Joe Aribo, who will be there, Mashali things as well. And um, up front, I mean, we have a host of options. Um, there's a the new new kids on the block, so to say. Emmanuel Dennis is there. 
Victor Simon and say, Mano Dennis can't get his goals. In fact, remember the last time what happened with Watford. They refused to let him go. That was how very important Emmanuel Dennis is to Watford FC. But I think he's repented now and he's uh, forced that move. And there's even no way, you know, Watford would keep him because it's an international window and everybody wants to go to the World Cup. And this is the opportunity. If you don't help the team, you definitely might not be considered if we qualify for the World Cup. So Nigeria has a very balanced side. I'm not sure about how long, um, if the time they blended is enough. But that's it with international windows, uh, especially with players who play abroad. You have, probably have about two, three, four days. And uh, yeah, but I saw them in the videos. Of course, I can't be there because my team, Bandit FC, also have a game today in Lagos. So I saw the videos. I saw that they the spirit is it's great, and um, you know they are looking forward to to victory today. Good thing that um, most of our strikers are informed. Lechi had a show, uh, of course, who will be playing a supportive role, no doubt. Is informed, you know, at least in the past month, it's featured scored uh, a goal or two. Victor Simon does hit a milestone, scoring 11 goals, the first Nigerian to do that in the city. Yeah, and he, you know, so he's he's in top form. Uh, after having met the, the Africa Cup of Nations. I just, they're looking so overbalanced this time uh, compared to the Ghanaian side, who, of course, we hear that uh, Dede Ayu uh, is, you know, out of seven as a center, of course. Uh, that was from the Afghans. Remember, he was issued a red card in the last group game against Comoros. Uh, we later heard that Jordan Ayu, uh, you know, tested positive, but <laughs> that's all changed because... Uh, yeah, the, the guy is negative and he is hit with the sport. You know, there's Thomas Partey as well. Uh, take nothing away from, uh, you know, Coach Otto other side. Um, they, they have a strong sport as well. They have, they are playing at home in this first leg. Uh, initially, they wanted to surprise us by taking us to Chase Coast, uh, in that very lousy stadium. But now we're at Baba Yara, which is a much better stadium. Um, Ghana is like Nigeria when it comes to supportership. You know, so we expect that we'll get lots of uh, Nigerians in there to cheer the Super Eagles. Can they play well? Yes, they can. Can they score goals? Yes, they can. And they'll have to do it more in the first leg and so that the second leg will be a formality. So I'm slightly tipping a win or a draw for Nigeria in Komatsu. They will finish the job uh, up on Tuesday. Um, a very fantastic analysis you have actually brought to the table there. I mean, you have uh, fans saying that having two strikers, the likes of uh, uh, Igalo and Osimen, uh, we should expect a hat trick there. But we see how all of that pans out. Now, as we begin to coast this conversation down, we, 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 as much as it feels like the Nigerian you know, side, the Super Eagles, uh, might just be in form, uh, is there really any lacuna? Is there any, um, any gap that you think that they need to pay attention to? Uh, before the game? Well, I mean, Austin Aguavon would have uh, probably played back the tape of the Tunisian game at the last couple of nations. Uh, we saw what we're missing there, uh, the, the disconnect, you know, from the midfield and how the strikers, the attackers, you know, couldn't utilize their chances when they did have them and how Tunisia closed those up after they scored that goal, you know, it just looked like there was no penetration anymore. So I, I think that the midfield needs to be very, very alert and see how they can boss the game. Um, we have players that if you get the ball to them, they will score as well. At, at some point, the burden was so much on Moses Simon, you know. How did uh, Moses Simon just come out of nowhere and be our best player, you know? Um, I mean, he's a winger. He has his own part to play. Let's not expect him to get the goals. Everyone should do their job, and that's it. You know, Osime wasn't there. Um, you know, we ha we're left with Sadiq Kumar. Well, nothing wrong with him. I mean, he went back to Italy and was scoring goals as well. Um, we don't have a Taiwa winning it now, but good thing we have Igalo, who knows how to put the ball at the back of the net. For Igalo, it's just simple. He's a maximum goal coacher. Get the ball to him and then score. So I think that we we lack that cutting edge in that game against Tunisia, and um, they would have. If I were the coach, I would have played that game back for them. 
and see how the, the midfield also was was strangulated, so to say, uh, after that game against, uh, you know, during that game against Tunisia. Um, the defence also needs to be very, very cautious because going for all-out goals. Uh, thank God there's a VAR. I would have said, you know, in African football, there's a lot of desperation. Ghana were beneficiaries of a horrendous refereeing decision that sent out South Africa from this same playoff. Mm. So don't forget South Africa will be back in Nigeria as well. I mean, from all the way there in South Africa. So um, officiating is going to play a big part. They should be uh, ensure that they don't trip any player in the box. Pate, are you avoid those guys. Make sure they don't get into the box. Kenneth Tomero would have a very, very serious role to play in the central defense. And um, I'm really wishing them all the best. But if you can see penalties there, uh, trust me, the, the referee and the VAR might not help you. You know, so uh, I think it's all defense. It, 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 all so, 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 so in all of this... Very alert to mm. the sort of desperation that Ghana have going into this game. They did not qualify for Russia 2018. They were embarrassed from the Africa Cup of Nations. Uh, so we need to be very careful. So um, all departments are compact. They just need to be alert uh, to the task at hand that come later today. Uh, well, just as we call sit down now, so in, in all of this, you're saying that we need to up our game in terms of our tactics because that has always been, you know, the major issue for us. You probably might have fantastic players, uh, you know, have potentials, but how you deploy them and how you manage them to get you the result is what's important. Am I correct? Uh, excuse me, I can't hear what you. I can't hear what you're saying. There's so much noise in the background. There. Well. Uh, I'm saying that uh, in all that you're saying is that we need to up our game in terms of our tactics. Mighty George. Yes, I'm here. Up our game, obviously. So um, are, are you saying that we, 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 need to, we need to up our game in terms of tactics because it's okay to have a fantastic team, talented players, but how uh, you know, the coach deploys them is very important? Surely. Okay. Um, that, that's just the basis of it. Uh, I mean, even when I said you should play the tape, you know, uh, of the game, it was for Austin Aguavon to also look at and see where he made mistakes in terms of tactics as well. You know, leaving strikers on the bench when you're supposed to put them in early enough, you know, and also uh, um, giving instructions to the back line and, and all that. But I expect that we'll be having wing play. Okay, wing but, but, but quickly, we we're really out of time, wing mighty drudge. Let me yeah. quickly bring this to you. So this was this been making the rounds. I mean, we saw the video of the Super Eagles arriving Kumasi yesterday. Uh, it felt like they were jumping from the aircraft. Uh, and some people say, oh, this was actually... <laughs> it's on a lighter note, by the way. And some people, you know, would say that this is actually a ploy, you, you know, to get the boys destroyed, especially their legs. And it would just make it useless for them to be able, you know, to push the ball around within the field. But we also have reports saying that this and is yeah. not Ghana's fault. It has to do with the airline that brought them, and that's the Epi's airline. So uh, what are your thoughts on that, quickly? Well, I mean, it, it's the Ghana, it's the Kumasi airport, you know, so um, all those, you know, jet steps and the hangars and everything, I, I expect that they belong to the, the airport or, you know, um, infrastructure, but if they say it's um, airpiece, well, but that was quite funny, and it could have passed <laughs> for a strategy by Ghana, you know, to frustrate Nigeria. But you guess what? Yeah, I mean, Ghana is like home to Nigeria, so no matter how much they try to frustrate us, uh, I, I don't think it got to the players. I was particularly, you know, humored by um, the end. And you saw the, the Mighty George, I have to let you go now. And I'm really sorry. Thank you so much for being part of the show. We appreciate uh, your thoughts every other time on uh, Plus TV Africa on The Breakfast. All right, then. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're out of time. Sports journalist and communication director of Andreza FC. Uh, being with us this morning talking about uh, Nigeria being part of the World Cup qualifiers. Justin is here. W how, m how many goals do you think? I was going to say how much. I think I like money. <laughs> I just wished Nigeria the best and that's as much as we can take. Many thanks to all of you who have sat back to watch. My name is Justin Akadanyesiu again on Monday.